All right, good morning to you. Happy Monday. It's Monday morning. That means it's day one of our prayer week. You are going to win the day and you are going to be on your way to winning the week. Uh, Thanks for just taking a few minutes to join me to get into scripture, to reflect on the character and nature of God, to pray together, to be a community of people that love God and love one another. Good morning, Tony. It is great to see you this morning. Nick is in the house today. There's going to be people from all over the world joining us today. I'm not, I'm, I'm not fabricating that. There's people from Uganda, people from Greece, uh, people from all over the United States. Good morning, Britt. Good morning, Lorraine, and everyone that's joining us today. Day one of the prayer week. Start it off right. Start your week off right. Vana, good morning to you. Great to see you and everyone that's joining us. I'm sure the Gages are going to be in the house. The Smiths are going to be in the house. It's going to be a great, great morning, day one of our prayer week. What a great night. If you were at Central last night, we had a a reveal night, a night of worship and ministry, and the Holy Spirit was powerfully present to encourage people to touch lives. Uh, I I believe he was glorified and honored by the church. It was a great, great time if you were able to be at Central last night. Uh, God bless you. All right, today is officially Make Someone Great Monday. Today's a, Freddie, what is today? Today is Make Someone Great Monday. We've been going through the Bible, looking at great men and women of faith who demonstrated godly character. Last Thursday, we ended our study in Paul. 23 days looking at the Apostle Paul. We're moving on, and we're looking at a man named Barnabas. Barnabas. Now, most nicknames have little to do with a person's character. So people call me Wheels. Now, I was pretty quick when I was an athlete. But Wheels is really just kind of a a derivative of my last name, Wheeler. They call me Wheels. It wasn't just because of my quickness. It was because it was kind of an easy way to say my last name and to identify me. Usually nicknames are a form of a person's name or maybe, maybe something to do with physical appearance or something along those lines. But Barnabas in the Bible, whose name was Joseph, was given a nickname by the apostles because he was always thinking about other people. He was always thinking about how to help others. Can you imagine if your nickname was given to you because you're always serving people, because you're always giving your life away, because you're always encouraging people? Did you, did you know that the, the name Barnabas means son of encouragement or one who encourages? Wow. Look at Acts chapter 4, verses 36 and 37. For instance... There was a man named Joseph, the one the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field that he had owned, and he brought the money to the apostles to do what with? To give to the poor, to help people in need. He sold his property and gave it to the apostles so so it could be distributed to help others. That really symbolized the life of Barnabas. He he existed to make other people great. He existed to help others. So they nicknamed him, because of his lifestyle of helping others, Barnabas, son of encouragement, one who encourages. Barnabas was the one who went to find Saul, who was later called Paul, to bring him back to Antioch to help him serve in ministry. He put him into ministry. Barnabas was the one who told the other disciples when Saul got converted, because Saul had been persecuting the church, that that you could trust Paul. You could trust him. He was genuinely saved. It was Barnabas that brought Paul to the the other disciples and said, he's okay, he's cool. He actually knows Jesus, and his his conversion was uh, genuine. He he was the one who, after um, uh, going on a missionary journey with Paul and taking John Mark, on, on the second trip, Paul didn't want to take John Mark. And, and, and Barnabas was willing to separate from Paul in order to encourage John Mark and to continue to mentor him in his life. Son of encouragement. Paul, uh, Barnabas existed for the purpose of other people. What is today? Make someone great Monday. Make someone great Monday. Be like Barnabas. Barnabas was always looking to make other people better, to help them reach their potential in Christ. Did you know that's, that was true of Jesus? Did you know that's why Jesus came? Mark chapter 10, verses 44 and 45 says, Even the Son of Man, Jesus says about himself, Even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve 
and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus said, I came to serve, not be served. I came to give my life away. I came to make others great. Jesus came to make your life great. He came to make you great. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says this, You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich in heaven, in glory, he had everything he, he, that he needed. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. He became a human. He suffered and died for you to make you rich spiritually. He became poor. Jesus came to make you great. He came to make me great spiritually. I was dead in sin. Jesus came to make me alive. I was separated from God. Jesus came to reconcile me and to give me life and to give me hope and to give me a whole new life. That's why Jesus came, to make us great spiritually. He became poor that we could become rich. Hey, Jesus was all about making other people great. See, what keeps us from encouraging others? You're going to go through your day to day. What's going to keep you from being an encourager, a, a son of encouragement like Barnabas? Well, we, we, we don't encourage people when we are consumed with ourselves, when we're only focused on our problems, when we're only focused on, on and care about the needs of ourself or the needs of our own family, when we can't see beyond our own pain, our own struggle, our own frustration, or our own sorrow, when we can't look beyond ourselves, the immediate, what's happening in our lives. That's why we don't become encouragers, because we don't look beyond ourselves. We'll never, we'll never encourage other people. We'll never make others great until we take our eyes off of us. And someone in your life today will need to be encouraged. You're going to come across broken people today. You're going to come across people that are hurting today. You're going to come across people with needs today. You're going to come across people today that need to be encouraged. And God set them in your life to encourage them. Will you do it? Will you make someone else great today? Someone's going to need to be told, you know, hey, you do this really well. You're doing, you're doing a good job as a single mom. Keep it up, man. I'm so proud of you. Someone's going to need some encouragement today. Someone's going to need you to tell them, hey, I'm with you. I got you. Man, I'm here for you. If I can do something to help you, let me know. Someone's going to need that today in your life. So someone's going to need to hear today, you can beat that cancer. Man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk with you, but God's going to give you the strength to overcome that. So you, someone needs to hear you say today, don't quit. Someone needs to hear you say, don't give up. Someone needs to hear you say, you're going to make it. Someone needs to hear you say, I see potential in you. I see growth in you. I see God working in your life. So, see, and we go through our day and we want people to encourage us. And God may be saying, no, I want you to encourage others. I don't want you to just wait for people to make you great. I want you to make other people great. Well, you're saying to me, well, yeah, that was easy for Jesus because he was the son of God. Well, you know what? Jesus encouraged people in his greatest moment of pain and suffering and sorrow when he could have been inward focused and worried about himself. Think about Jesus on the cross. A, a, a sinner next to him on, on a cross next to him, you know, is, is pouring out his heart in repentance. And Jesus turns to him and says, hey, hey, listen, today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Jesus took the time to actually listen to the guy in the midst of being, can you imagine hanging on a cross by nails, having a crown of thorns on your head, having, having bled and being beaten the night before, and still having the, 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 the patience and the strength to turn to the guy and say, hey, listen, I, I hear you. And, and today you're going to be with me in paradise. Jesus found a moment on the cross to look down to John the apostle and tell him, make my mother great. Take care of my mom. He, he found enough uh, uh, compassion in his heart on the cross to think about someone else. He was thinking about his mother. And he said, hey, John, take care of my mom. Make my mom great. Serve my mom, right? He's hanging on the cross, and the very people that crucified him, the very people that beat him, he prays for them to the Father. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Who's Jesus thinking about in that moment? Not himself. Not the pain that he suffered, not what people did to him. Jesus is thinking about their well-being. Jesus wants to make them great. Jesus stays on the cross because of his love for them. See, he was thinking about others even in his greatest pain. What is today? Today is Make Someone Great Monday. 
Get your eyes off of your pain. Get your eyes off of yourself. Yeah, if people encourage you, that's wonderful. But you were sent today to make someone great. You were sent to encourage somebody. We're looking at Barnabas today, the son of encouragement. And so we're going to pray this morning. The Lord gives us the strength and the power and the discipline to look away from ourselves, to see the needs around us, and like Barnabas, to be an encourager. You ready to pray this morning, friends? Come with me. Come on. Lord, this morning, I thank you that when you hung on the cross and you were in your greatest pain, you didn't look at yourself. You looked at a dying world and you said, forgive them. They, they, they don't know what they're doing. You said, hey, hey, John, take care of my mom. She's going to need help. Make my mom great. You, you, Jesus, you looked at the, the thief on the cross and you listened to him and you saw his heart was tender and repentant. And you said, I tell you the truth. Today, you're going to be with me in paradise. You, you, you had the, the, the strength and the wherewithal and the love to invite him into the kingdom, to, to welcome him into the kingdom. Now, Lord, today, as we go through our day, there's going to be people that, that need to hear uh, at a girl way to go today. There, there's going to be people that need our words of encouragement, people that need our prayers of encouragement, people that need us to come alongside them, people that need our resources, people that need our love. So Lord, today, let the Holy Spirit, just pray this friend right now, Holy Spirit flow through my life, just like a river flow through my life. And, and, and everywhere that river goes, every person it touches, let it give life. Let my words give life. Let my love give life. Let my compassion give life to those around me today. Help me to lift them up, to encourage them, to strengthen them and help them. God, let my, my attitude today be, I'm going to, through Christ, make someone great, someone else great today. Help me to do that, Father, in Jesus' name. Everybody said, come on. Everybody said, this is your day to make someone great. This is your day to be an encourager. This is your day to lift somebody up. This is your day to strengthen someone else. God called you for that purpose today. Make it happen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning.